Congratulations on making it to the finals. It's a thrill to have the last check mark. You know, when Mark Burnett designed this game, he designed, you know, uh, making it to the jury and individual rewards and individual immunities and uh, food auctions and family visits and final tribal. And dang it, I did every single one of those things. I got to experience every single part of this game. I look back at my experience and I left nothing on the table. I loved this game. So what was the hardest question you were asked, the most difficult to answer at the final tribal council? There was a lot of the final tribal council that's added it out. Yes. So you don't really see the whole, I guess, two or three hours that mm -hmm. happens. Um, but the hardest decision that I had to make in this game and the hardest question was one of the players that we were voting out, and I was the swing boat. And this player walked up to me and he said, if you vote me out tonight, I will go back to Ponderosa and I will poison, I will lie, cheat, beg, borrow, and steal. I will lie about what you said about their kids, what you said about their wife, and I will make sure that you never get a vote. So you might last one day longer than me, but you will never win this game. Are you here to win this game or not? And you have to weigh everything out. Like, you could play a perfect game. See, I see this game as a third of the, the 17 other players. That's only a third of the game. And I think most players just look there. I see Jeff Probst as a whole third of the game. People say he's too involved in the game. I love his involvement in the game, as long as you incorporate it into your strategy. And then another third of the game is production. Those side confessionals that they take you to and they start asking you questions and it draws out these things that you've been bottling up that you didn't even realize were inside of you. And some people would come back kind of bouncy and giddy. I'm like, wow, what did they just discover about themselves or about me or about somebody? So I always made sure that I got into a conversation with somebody right after they got back from the confessionals. I saw those three as all thirds of the game. The part of the game I completely underestimated that I just cannot figure out yet is that darn Ponderosa. More game is played at Ponderosa than on the island. Mm. Now, I want to know if you kept that ball from the final immunity challenge. Isn't that interesting that you would ask that? <laughs> because they save every prop, every piece, every speck of wood from every single challenge. I don't know if they archive it or save it for another season, but I walked over and I was just so thrilled. Like I had made it to the end of my journey. I had the immunity necklace. I was calling the shots for that brief moment in time. And I walked by the table as I was leaving and I grabbed the ball and I looked back at Probes and production kind of looked at me like, oh, what is he doing? And I looked back at Probes and I'm like, I kind of winked at Probes and Probes winked at me back and I have the ball. I have that ball. And I looked at that ball and I said, you are a $1 million ball. Wow. I thought I had it at that minute because I knew that I got to pick who sat in the final three. Uh -huh. So what did you do with it? I have it at home. I have it in my desk drawer. I mean, I look at it all the time. I mean, it's like it was a great, great moment for me, win or lose. And I guess you don't, you don't lose. I mean, you, you come in second and you win a hundred grand or whatever it is. Um, it's it's it, it's not a loss to me. It was the moment where I needed to step up. For, I, I don't care if you were good at that or not good at that challenge. You needed to step up. That's the part. That's the time when everything's on the table and. I did it, and I just felt, I mean, that was, besides the family visit, it was probably the most, well, and getting head-butted by a whale shark, where I thought I was going to die. If he was, if that whale shark was yawning, I was Jonah. Yeah. I mean, I was in its belly. It, it really went biblical. <laughs> so fortunately, I, its mouth was closed at the time. And I'm 25 feet under, and I'm looking up, and I'm waving at people. Boom! I'm in the mouth. Well, not in the mouth. I was on the mouth of it. Uh -huh. I would have been in the mouth had it had been opened. And then, what do you do? Yeah. I, so, you had the shirt. There's a guy on a rhino in your first season. You show up with that shirt again. Is there some significance to that? or What's yeah, the story with the shirt? There's a significance to that. Um, there's a book called Rhinoceros Success. It was written by a guy named Scott Alexander. And he lives right here in California. And uh, I read the book. And it's a short, little, quick, motivational little way to go through life. And he says, rhinos have six-inch thick skin. They charge to the jungle. They don't have good eyesight. It's the only animal not afraid of fire. And they just go. You know, and it, the Holy picture, crap, that's scooping. The, the, the picture on the front cover is a cow driving a limo kind of looking at the cows in the pasture and the rhinos charging you know and so uh, 
I have that philosophy in life. I've become a rhino. And I, we, I look at my kids and I look at my friends. And I look at my business partners. And, you know, I hire rhinos. I turn my kids into rhinos because I want them to charge. For, I want them to seize the moment. And, you know, on Survivor, you seize the moment and you get a cut. Cuts don't heal on Survivor. You can't clean them. It's so humid. There's no way. When I sliced my foot open, the doctors looked at me and they said, keep it dry for 24 hours. No, 48 hours. And I go, okay. So I hopped over and I was going to get on the boat to take you back to the island. And it's about an hour boat ride. But because of the waves and the rocky shore, the boat was 150 feet out in the water, in chest deep water. So I get, I'm hopping until the water gets up to my knee. And then finally you had to get your foot wet. And I looked back at the doctor and he went, and the next time I saw him, he said, I can give you all the medical advice I want. Then the game takes over. So there really isn't relief from injuries. You posted something on Facebook, and I just have to ask. You said uh, all the scoopings are going to California. Who's going to draw first blood? So, yes, yes. Who drew first My blood? son, my 24-year-old son that was on the show, fell off the rocks at Venice Beach and scraped the whole side. He goes, I got first blood. And then my 15-year-old daughter, Emily, she got uh, her whole foot tore up on those same rocks, and they were fighting over who actually drew first blood. But, yeah, both, so we had two bleeders that day, and I have survived without bleeding <laughs> so far. Are. Good deal. Michael, we're so being much. told we're out of time. So thank you so much. We enjoyed you again. Thank you. And so good thank luck you. to you thank and you. the family. All right. And actually, we've enjoyed you all around the hotel, too. <laughs> <laughs> you were awesome, man. Appreciate thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.